Hello, hello, thank you, Philip. You're one of my favorite people, too. Um, so I am Fran Scott, hello. Um, some of you may know me, no, no, no. So um, I have done a little bit of TV in the past, um, mostly children's television. Uh, so those of you UK based, um, if you've heard of Dick and Dom, um, we did a science program where I tried to teach that double act science, uh, which proved interesting. Um, over in the US, I do a program called Mysteries of the Abandoned. I've done a BBC Worldwide program that I think is in 27 countries uh, called Factomania. If you've seen it, I'm sorry. Um, but most, uh, my favorite program uh, was one that I feel so lucky to have got involved with, uh, which was Lego Masters, UK Lego Masters. And I was the engineering judge on that. Um, but I also have a real job. Um, in fact, I have two real jobs. Um, I work at the Royal Institution, which UK people might know of, and some of you worldwide, um, the Christmas lectures you may have heard of, held at Christmas time. They've been going since 1825. Um, here's a fact for you. They were the first science ever to be shown on television. FYI, that wasn't in 1825. Um, and so what I do, basically the Christmas lectures, they show the latest scientific research through science demonstrations. Um, and I head up the demonstration team there. So it's my job to basically build props, design demonstrations, and I also run a white label um, theater production company. Um, again, designing demonstrations. So my skills lie in demo design. I come up with visual ways to show scientific ideas. I'm not a coder. So what am I doing closing the Scratch conference? Well, to do understand that, let's go back to 2012. So 2012, there's a bit of a resurgence in coding here in the UK. Um, something to do with a small computer that you may have heard of that um, came on the scene. And people were coming to me because basically I'd become known as this woman who can come up with novel demonstrations to show scientific ideas. So I was getting so many calls saying, hey, Fran, can you come up with something about coding? And I was like... No, because I don't know how to code. And the last time I coded was about when I was 10 years old, right, at the time, 10 years old on my Spectrum computer. And um, that was all I did. And it took me like a day to load up the tapes and things like that. And so I pushed it aside and went on to woodwork. And um, so I hadn't coded, but people kept on coming to me and asking me for demonstrations involving coding. I didn't have them. Nobody else had them. And I was like, well, these are needed. If I don't do them, who is going to? So I was like, OK, deep breath, come up with coding demonstrations. Um, so what I did was I learned to code. And I came up with a theater science show. Now, I'm a pyrotechnician. Um, which means I get to set things on fire and get paid, uh, which is lovely. Um, so I did what I knew, and I came up with an explosions-based computer coding show. Um, it's as fun as it sounds. Um, it's called Era 404, and um, I've got a little bit of video of it to show you, just to give you a bit of an idea of what it was about. Welcome to Era 404. Now, this show is all about computers coding Explosions. Woo! So you need to go like this, and you don't look ridiculous at all. Don't be afraid, nothing bad is going to happen just yet. It's going to get good. Thank you very much. This is what's known as a xylo ball, and quite frankly, they're just a ball of awesomeness. You do not need a keyboard for it to be a computer. So we are going to live code our explosive finale. No pressure, except for all the pressure that's there. This is my biggest fan. <laughs> Make some noise now. Woo! So that gives you a bit of an idea of the type of stuff that I produce. Um, now, the thing is, I loved that show because it opened up the audience's eyes to what you could do with computers. But quite selfishly, it 
opened up my eyes to what you can do with computers. In particular, I am a massive fan of physical computing. Um, as a prop builder and demo designer, this physical computing world that I hadn't heard of was basically like this uncovered door in Aladdin's cave of prop building. And I was like, look at everything that's possible. Like, I can dream up something and make it, and it does it. And I absolutely loved it. Um, but it was a hugely steep learning curve. I went from not being able to code to live coding Python in front of audiences of 3,000. And um, it terrified me. Every time I did it, I was like, oh, get it right, get it right. But it did open the door to all these possibilities. Um, so basically, I was like, how did I go about doing that? Well, to understand what was possible in the future of this show, I started by looking at what was happening sort of back in the day and what was familiar, what was the norm. And to me, the norm with a computer was you have a monitor, you have a mouse, and you have a keyboard. So I've got a keyboard here, um, and we all know how a keyboard works, right? You touch a letter, touch a key, that letter should appear on the screen. Here somewhere. Oh, maybe not. Well, it will appear on the screen. Is it, are we dead? Now, we know how a keyboard works. You touch a letter, that letter appears on the screen, right? Apart from, that's not how a keyboard works. That's how you use a keyboard, right? So, to figure out how a keyboard works, you need one of these. So, are we up? We're going to get up soon. Has it dropped the server? Is it coming? It's coming, it's coming. This is John, everybody. He's going to be troubleshooting as we go. <laughs> he will get involved. We run it, we run it. You let me know if we need the HDMI. You got, you, got, you got confidence. OK, so I'll flip this baby upside down, and I'll get into under the bonnet of the keyboard. And hopefully, we'll have a little bit of a a LibreOffice document up there. Nice smug face, I like it. So, um, inside a keyboard, basically, you've got three plastic sheets. One, two, three. You've got this top sheet, which has got um, white dots and lines on it. And then you've got a bottom sheet, which has got white dots and lines on it. And in between those two sheets, we have a middle sheet. This has no dots and lines on it, but it has holes in it. So I can poke through those holes with my screwdriver. Now, the way a keyboard works is those dots and lines are actually metallic contacts. So you've got metallic contacts on the top sheet, metallic contacts on the bottom sheet, and it just so happens that the line, the, the hole, lines up with the dots. So when you touch a key, the two metallic contacts are pushed together through the hole. They close the switch, that means the circuit is complete, and you end up with your letter on screen. So I should be able to touch them together and we get the letter on screen. So basically, <laughs> good work. <laughs> so basically, a keyboard is switches. I went from not knowing what a keyboard was to being like, cool, it's switches. I'm a maker. I know what switches. But why is it held within the keyboard? What about if we could take it away from the keyboard? So I got some clothes pegs, and I attached a little drawing pin. So I can put a drawing pin on one side. Let's put it here, make sure it touches the contact, just like that. A drawing pin on the other side. Now, I should say that demos are like naughty children, and they all always misbehave at the most awkward of times. So this may or may not work, but we've now got the switch not with those metallic contacts, but here with the clips. So if I touch these clips together, we should get a Z appearing on screen. Yes! <laughs> Basically, you guys know how switches work. If you complete the circuit, you will get the electricity flowing, and then things will happen. But you just need that electricity to flow. Here we've got metal. Electricity doesn't just flow through metals. If you have like a salty, watery liquid, then it will flow through that. And a salty, watery liquid, like my saliva, so I should be able to touch these on my tongue and make a letter Z. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of shoulds in this show. OK, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> so 
So that is how, let's pop this one down here. So basically a keyboard is a whole load of switches. And I was like, well, cool. I know what switches are. So this got my brain a whirling. And I was sat in my workshop and I was like, right, so it's all about switches. So I did what any good maker does. <laughs> and I reached for the nearest thing. Now, the nearest thing happened to be my hammer. So what I've got here is my hammer, and I've got a block of wood with a bolt in it. And you will notice some wires and stuff like that. Obviously, they're both made of metal. They're not touching at the moment, but if they touch, we should complete a circuit, and something should happen. Ouch! 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 That's actually John going out. I won't tell you what I did to him to make him do that. So basically, yeah, that is just done with a makey makey. And you guys will know makey makeys. It's that thing that just makes anything into a key. You can do banana pianos, you can do lots of other stuff, which I'll explain in a bit. But I wanted to go further than the makey makey. Now, to go further, I had to use this little baby the Raspberry Pi. Come on. Now, uh, the thing that I loved about the Raspberry Pi was these bits here. The little sticky out bits, those general purpose input output pins, those GPIO pins. And um, <laughs> basically, you could do a lot with those GPIO pins. Those are just switches. They've just got very confusing numbers, but they are just switches. And they're switches that you can take away from the computer. And um, and this is what I used mostly in the Error 404 show. And I want to share with you a little bit of story about how I ended up working with Raspberry Pi. Um, so as a non-coder, I was there in front of my TV screen. My eyesight's very bad, so I was sat really, really close trying to get everything to work and the internet plugged in and all of this lot. And so I was like, do you know what? I'm going to try and get it working up SSH on my iPad. And had spent like seven hours that day trying to do it. And then I was invited to these drinks. And I was like, oh, I must go and get to these drinks. And I arrived at these drinks, still my brain whirling, what am I doing wrong with my SSH? Why can't I get the Raspberry Pi to work on my iPad? And there was this group of people, and they were talking about Raspberry Pi. And I was like, awesome. So I went up to this group, and I was like, hey, do you guys know about Raspberry Pi? And one person went, well, he does. He was Eben. <laughs> Those of you that don't know, Eben was the founder of Raspberry Pi. And Eben, in his very modest way, went, yeah, I know a little bit. And, um, and he was like, why? Why do you want to know? And I said, well, I'm trying to get this working on my iPad because I'm writing this show. I'm trying to write um, an explosions-based coding show using Raspberry Pis. He was like, we need to talk. Um, <laughs> so they invited me into their wonderful family. And I must thank a few people. There was Andrew Robinson and Ben Nuttall and Carrie Ann. You were great. And basically, they helped me learn to code. And we came up with some absolutely awesome stuff. Um, one of my favorite demonstrations there, um, <laughs> it was very naughty to get working, but we pers persevered, was called Hoops and Pedals. So we would have a basketball hoop and a bicycle. And um, we'd have a giant fan and those big xylo balls, which you saw. And I would live code that, and the audience would get to choose between the basketball and the pedal. And then we'd invite an audience member down, and they would try and score a basket or cycle up to a certain speed. And when that happened, that would make a giant fan turn on. And then we would put those giant balls in front of the giant fan and throw them into the audience. Um, now, I remember going to Andrew with this idea, and he was like, you what? And, um, but it did work, and, uh, and it just revealed to me all the amazing things you could do with physical computing. So that was era 404, but things move on. I got other commissions in, and I was like, do you know what? I've got to park era 404. So quite sadly, um, the whole show got put into a storage unit. And, um, and on that note, if anyone does need a nine-foot-high non-working computer, um, do let me know. In all seriousness, it's going for free, the price of a van. Um, I love it, but it's very expensive to keep. Um, so it got parked. Um, and I missed it. And um, I got a call a few weeks ago from Raspberry Pi. And they were like, hey, Fran, do you want to bring Error 404 to the Scratch conference. I was like, yes. They were like, there's two rules, right? Rule number one is it's held in Churchill, conference, um, Churchill College. Now, Churchill College is uh, Winston Churchill, and like, basically, there's lots of his old papers here. So if there's any sniff of fire, the whole of the Cambridge Fire Brigade descend on the place. 
they were like, rule number one, no fire. I was like, okay, I'm a pyrotechnician. Um, rule number two, can you use a little bit of scratch? And I was like, fair enough, I've used it a little bit, but not that much. So I was like, so you want Era 404, an explosions-based coding show that uses Python at a scratch conference without fire. Um, so I was like, I tell you what, I want to get involved because I absolutely love this. And to be honest, it was a little bit of an excuse for me to enter that other room of Aladdin's cave again. And so over the last uh, two and a half weeks, <laughs> we've got the biggest bags ever. We have been working on some demonstrations involving physical computing and Scratch. And what we really wanted to do was come up with demonstrations that you guys could take back to what you do, like in the classroom or in the community groups or anything, but also things that you might quite not be able to do, but it would inspire you to do other things. So with that in mind, We'll go back to my hammer, and we'll pretend it's a nail, but a bolt is more visible. So we can actually do this much easier using Scratch. Originally, I did it using um, the Sound Plant app, but using Scratch, it's so, so simple. So if we just go into when space is pressed, then we want the sound, and we want the play sound, but we don't want the meow, we want the ouch. That simple, touch it on, Ouch! Ouch! So it's so simple to do, and there's loads of ideas you can do that. We've actually done it so um, when you drink milk, the milk goes moo. Um, when you pour water from a jug, you can have it going wee. Basically, the imagination, your imagination is the only limit when it comes to that. But again, that's the makey makey. If you want to go further, you use this wonderful Raspberry Pi. So, this is where it could all go horribly wrong. <laughs> right, let me just clear the table a bit because what I've got under here are two beautiful buttons. I've got a yellow and a blue one, which we can just wire in like this. We've got a yellow and a blue one. And up on the screen, if the screen's behaving, we should have a little scratch cat. Now, at this point, forgive me, my animation skills are not what we're looking at here. Um, <laughs> you guys know how to make scratch look pretty. What I'm showing you is sort of the physical computing side. Um, and basically, we've got two buttons, and they are detected as inputs on the Raspberry Pi. So if I touch the yellow one, then that's my left, your right. Scratch Cat will move. I would love Scratch Cat to move. Thank you. Scratch Cat will move towards the yellow one. If I press the blue button, he'll move towards my right, your left, the blue one. Now, he should be back in the center. So, I... <laughs> I'm an absolute child at heart, which you may have gathered, um, which is interesting for a pyrotechnician. But um, basically, if I can gamify something, I do. So what I've done is made this into a game. And we are going to need two volunteers to play this game. We've got one. We need another one. OK, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for you. And you there, because you're a hand shot. Just give them a round of applause. What's your name? Shout it out. Nadav. Nadav. Yeah. Nadav, come up, come up. Yeah, don't press the button yet. Oh, Stop the program. <laughs> What's your name? Alexandra. Alexandra. So Nadav, if you come here, don't touch or kick or trip over anything. This is your button, you're yellow. And Alexandra, you are blue. Now the program isn't running, correct? No. Correct, right. So this is going to be about speed, right? So it's not about being graceful. No, it's about hitting the button as fast as you can, OK? And the faster you hit the button, the more Scratch Cat will move towards your ball. Oh, okay? Like tug of war. Like tug of war, yeah. Um, now, you guys, we're going to split you down the middle. You guys are the blue team. You guys are the yellow team. So I'm really glad when the last people came in, they ended up going over there. Put all of my friends to the blue team. <laughs> <laughs> That's life. So, um, you, can <laughs> you can have a little bit of a practice, touch the buttons, just a practice, gentle, gentle, gentle. Okay, stop. That's your practice over. Okay? Yeah. Don't touch the button until I say go. Okay, promise. I think he's going to be trouble, Alexandra. Okay. 
Oh, this is where my making skills come into play. Let me check that I've plugged everything in. I have, I have, I have. It's working. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, hands behind. behind yeah, hands behind your back. Competitive. I like it. <laughs> Keep it. Run the program. You've run it. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah, give him support. Especially his, especially <laughs> the friends on the other side. Um, okay, you guys ready? Three, two, one, go! Go on, go on! Stop, 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 stop! <laughs> I know, it's like... Nice one. I like that your competitiveness led to your hand hurting rather than losing the game. But really good work. Well done. Shall we do best of three? Yeah. Yeah, you want another go? Okay, let's just reset the buzz. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's, it's quite scary. Now, be careful with my button. This needs to keep on working, okay? Okay? If, you, can use, you can use your head if you want. Um, <laughs> We're running. Stop. Hands behind back. Go! Oh, oh. Oh, stop, stop! We have a winner. Give them a round of applause. Really well done. You can pop down to your seats again. Well done, well done. Give a bow on the end. Definitely some competition going on there. So, uh, they're, they're fine, they're fine. <laughs> no, they're, they're fine, I think. So, <laughs> that is something that is so easily replicable um, in your classrooms, in your community shows. But, input was the buttons, output was on the screen. Quite frankly, as a maker, that makes me sad. So, what I did was I built this. Um, now, this looks like a bunch of plastic from my local um, department store, and that's exactly what it is, because what I wanted to do was build something that was cheap, something, there's no point in me building like a 300 pound prop, because you won't be able to get that in your schools, so I wanted to build something that you guys could then build. So basically, this is just a conduit pipe, so just plastic pipe with a few T-junctions. We've got a bike pump, We've got a pipe going all the way through here. When I pump this, air comes out the top there. So what we can do is fit on top a little bottle rocket. So this just fits on the top here. But what I want to show you is the clever bit. What I think is the clever bit. You're preparing yourselves. Um, so on a bottle, now you won't have noticed this, but now every time you drink a bottle, you'll be like, oh yeah, there's a little ridge just underneath where the lid goes. Now that ridge is perfect for making bottle rockets because what you can do is you can get some cable ties or zip ties, I think they're called across the pond, and you can put them onto your pipe. You can also get a slightly thicker pipe, so this one's a 40 mil, so 40 millimeter diameter. And what happens is when I put the bottle onto the pipe, like that, I think this will work, the cable ties are nice and loose. But when I raise the collar up, it holds them into place, so it closes them around that lip. And then if I just put it like that, then I can pump air into it. Okay. It's held into place until I release the collar. Like that. <laughs> So what we've got is we've got another rocket launcher <laughs> here. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> but the thing is, uh, you may have noticed that that was set off with me just pulling the collar down, right? No computering was involved in that. Now, John, I am forever indebted with because he introduced me to the absolutely best thing in the universe, the servo. Oh. So, we have a servo here. Um, I'm going to do a human version of a servo. Basically, it's like a dial with a big arm. And if you send a certain signal through it, so a pulse width modulation, but basically, if you send a signal through it, it makes the arm go from this 
to this. And that's exactly perfect for launching rockets. Because what I did was onto my collar, I just attached a bit of string and attached that onto the servo. So when I send a signal through to the servo, what it'll do is it'll move from this to this, pull the string, which pulls the collar, which releases the cable ties, which then releases the bottle towards your face. <laughs> So I'm just going to set this up a little bit. Now, I'm just going to plug my servos in because that always helps. And um, we've color coded everything. Um, so that goes in here, that goes in there. I need to get my bottles in. All right. Now I am going to need two volunteers for this. Who would like to come and volunteer? You aren't going to go anywhere near this. Um, <laughs> let's get someone from the Scratch team. Let's get you. Uh, let's get you there. Let's give them a round of applause. What's your name? Manuch. Manuch? Nyalia. 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 Is that close enough? There. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. Nyalia. 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 Yeah. Nyalia. yeah. <laughs> totally forgotten your name. Right. So we've got <laughs> we've got Noelia and Bruce. Manuch. Manus, thank you. Um, I'm just going to put your bottle on like this. Now, this is the bit where it can go horribly wrong. So I just need to... God, you, you were good. You went so silent. So I just need to make it just touch. Oh, just touch. Oh, hang on. I'm not making encouraging sounds, am I? Okay. Hmm. 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 I don't have faith for that one working. Oh, yours is good. Okay. So, first rule is gentle. Okay. okay. Second rule is, now, what we're going to have to do is you're going to have to pump up your rockets first to get them full of air, more air. Now, not yet. On your dials, you can see a red arrow. Mm -hmm. So when I say you pump your rocket, you might want to hold it at the base while you do it, and you pump it up to 20 PSI. OK, not yet. Oh, nice. Thank you. These need to be, because the servo, the torque in my servos is very slightly less than what I need. Um, so sometimes the collar doesn't quite release. Let's just get the aiming right. Yeah, that's right at that man's face. So um, <laughs> don't do anything yet. <laughs> so when I say you're going to pump it up to 20 PSI, then you're going to come back to the buttons. And then it's the button race. Okay. Now, what John is doing just now is putting in the coding for the servo. So what we've done is for the input buttons, there's a GPIO um, extension, which you can do. But also, we're using Scratch to Pi, which allows you to then extra functions on the Pi to be able to control servos. Thank you very much for remembering to do that, John. Um, so um, what you're going to do is pop that up to 20 PSI. Not yet. Pop that up to 20 PSI. Then once you've done that, come back to your buttons. Press, 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 gentle, gentle, gentle. And then whoever reaches their ball first, your rocket launches. Now, you guys, again, we've got the blue team, we've got the yellow team. Now, whoever catches the first bottle rocket to fire has volunteered themselves for the finale. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was thinking if only like wedding bouquets were like this, I might actually like go for it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. Um, uh, elbowing, pushing people over, totally allowed. Um, just one rule. If the rocket is coming towards your face, your face is in the wrong place. Um, <laughs> so just move, replace your face with your hand or someone else's hand or someone else's face. So um, if you could put these on, because there's a very slight chance that the rocket could explode in your face. You understand? Okay, hands on the, don't, not yet. Yeah, yeah. You guys understand. Do you understand? <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. Okay, okay, have faith, have faith, have faith. Okay, you ready? Steady, go. Up to 20, it's quite hard. Keep going, keep going. Once you're up to 20, that's it. Get it in, that's it. Keep going, give them encouragement. Oh! Oh, he's going towards the yellow, he's going towards the yellow. Oh, it hasn't quite fired. Let's just... Hey! <laughs> Give them both a massive round of applause. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you.
You can go right to this. It worked! It actually worked! <sighs> so, who caught the bottle rocket? You did. Okay, yeah. Do you have any heart conditions? No. What's your name? Shout it out. Austin. Oscar. Gosh, I am making up names today. Um, Oscar. Um, I'm a deaf pyrotechnician. There's a reason for that. So, um, Oscar, you stay where you are because we're just going to move a few things and get it set up and ready. Now, Oscar, do you know you're left from your right? Oh, hello. <laughs> you don't get anything. So, <laughs> you know you're left from your right. Good, because you're going to need that. So, we're going to move this out the way, this very light table. <sighs> okay. Okay. Now, while we're rearranging the stage, um, oh, hello. Um, what we're going to do is try and put all of this stuff on GitHub. Um, now, give us some time to sleep first, and then we'll... Oh, um, <laughs> We haven't spilt anything. And, um, and when it's on GitHub, we'll let you know. So if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, um, at Franz underscore facts. I have no idea why I went for the underscore. Um, so I'll let you know when it's available on GitHub. And also, if any of you have taken photos of today, please do at me in them, because we end up with no photos, because we're doing it. And you can't take photos while you're doing it. So I just need the other two buttons. So let me grab them back. Over here. I get so out of breath doing shows. Uh, I want this one and this one because whoa, what we're going to do is set up what we quite obviously call the four button game. So we've done the two button game. We now increase to four buttons. Okay. Now, Oscar, um, do you have a latex allergy at all? No. Uh, are you easily frightened? No. Yeah, yeah, we, we will totally test that. So let me just check that everything's ready. Battery is in. That's in. So we've got one, two, three. Nice. OK, let's get it up on the screen. So Oscar, let's give him a big round of applause. Up you come. Up you come. So, Oscar, there's a lot of wires to trip you up. Um, yep, so there's just a trapdoor here. If you just stand on there, that's perfect. Um, so, what we're going to do is you've got four buttons, right? We've got an up, a down, a left, and right. Now, if you guys look at the screen, if you look at the screen behind you, you can turn around. Now, you'll notice that there's balloons around Scratch Cat. And you'll notice that the color of the balloons in real life match the color of the balloons on the screen. Yeah. But you won't be able to see the screen. These guys are going to shout directions at you. So when they shout left, you touch that one. Mm -hmm. When they shout right, this one, up that one, down that one. Okay. Now, I will tell you guys which balloon to go for, otherwise it will just be carnage. Um, now, what happens, Oscar, is when Scratch Cat touches a balloon, there's a rather scary surprise that happens. Okay, you'll be fine. I'll be here with you. Okay. Um, yeah, you'll be fine. I've got good insurance. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, don't do anything yet, is I left a note for myself, which was turn me on. So, I'm going to turn it on. Okay. We're now live. <gasps> yeah, John, you, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what we're going to do, now, if you do touch, if you make him touch one of the other balloons that you're not going for, then something will happen at the same time. So try and avoid the other balloons that you're not meant to be going for. Cool? Cool. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Good. Right. Okay. So that's on. They're all plugged in. <sighs> Everyone cross their fingers, not you. Okay. Let's go for the... Oh, well, let's start with one. Uh, let's go for the green balloon. Hang on. Le left, left. Yeah, so that's left. Oh. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, so, 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 your left is, yeah, so it's, so you're looking at the screen. So when you say left, he goes left. Okay, so right, 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 right. Yeah, keep going. Oh, blue one doesn't work. Hang on, hang on. We're going to be okay. <laughs> Who had the blue button? Yeah, she did. Okay, let me just have a little look-see inside of here. Ah, that's okay. Totally a loose wire. There we go. <sighs> Yay! Okay. So, right, yeah? Right. <laughs> Let's go for the yellow balloon. Oh. Let's go for the blue balloon. when we did a rehearsal on Thursday night. And as a pyrotechnician, John recorded it and my face was like this. <gasps> Every time a balloon went off, but you guys helped him do it. It actually worked, it actually worked. Oh. Um, if anyone does have a vacuum cleaner, let me know. Um, but that does bring us to the end. But I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for inviting me. I have learned so much this weekend. I absolutely love this, this whole new world of physical computing that I got opened up to all those years ago. And to know how to do it with Scratch now, that just makes it even more accessible to the audiences that I perform in front of. And um, so absolutely, completely thank you. And I hope you guys have got as much out of this weekend as me. Let's give everyone involved here, all the organizers, organizing the conference is so different. Difficult. A round of applause. Now that was is the end of the Scratch conference. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks again to Scratch. Thanks again to Raspberry Pi. And um, I am the fat lady, and I have just sung. Thank you. <laughs>